WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, home of Southern Sports and Talk, Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad, let the distant shores rejoice. The clouds and thick darkness surround him, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. He reigns, he reigns. Hello everyone, this is DJ Commando of a 45's Affair radio show, where I play all vinyl 45's. You're listening to WQEE 99.1 FM, noon in Georgia. Calvary Sonoy Fellowship is an expository Bible teaching church where we study the Word of God line by line and we apply it life by life. We're here every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock on WQEE and we look forward to having you join us. Our church offices are located in Sonoy, Georgia, 6855 East Highway 16, Suite 102, Sonoy, Georgia. If you'd like to call us, our number is 770-755-8243. Or you can reach me, I'm Pastor Bob, at bob at calvarysonoy.org, S-E-N-O-I-A. You also can go to our website at www.calvarysonoy.org. You can reach our YouTube channel there, as well as our Facebook page. Join us at 10 o'clock right here on WQE. 
Tune in each Sunday morning right here on WQEE 99.1 FM for the key for help from a high with Bishop Daniel Holloway Sr. of Redemptive Life Worship Center at 9 a.m. Hear the Word of God and soak it in. You can join us for our live Sunday service at 10 o'clock a.m. till 12.30 p.m. at Redemptive Life Worship Center at 2265 Highway 54 in Marlin, Georgia. Have a blessed week. Extra, extra, extra. God's newspaper boy, Elder Gerald Alfred, is inviting you to listen in to the voice of of Reason Broadcast, bringing you fresh revelation from God's Word for today, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I'll have a seat for you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on WQEE 99.1 FM. I am Apostle Deborah Harris, Pastor Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121 Hillwood Circle, Noonan, Georgia. Presenting Connecting the Kingdom. Connecting kingdom citizens, kingdom businesses, and advancing the kingdom of God in this hour. Join us each Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. with guests who are sharing their faith, business, and ministry. Hey, I'm Jimmy Ellis, and I'm the pastor here at Noonan City Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to our website and hope that you'll take the time to look throughout the website all the different activities that are going on in the life of our church. Our purpose statement here at Noonan City is transforming lives for Jesus' sake, and we believe that takes place in three separate pillars. The first one is corporate worship, and we come together each Sunday for our worship services where our focus is on glorifying God. That is the, the purpose, the focus focus of our of our um, worship services each Sunday. The second pillar is local missions. And we believe that church is not to be contained inside the walls of a building, but rather outside those walls. And we look for opportunities and we have different partners in the community where we partner with other kingdom-minded ministries that are doing kingdom work. And so encouraging our individuals here at the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus outside the walls of our congregation. So that's the second pillar. And the third pillar is our community groups, our small groups where we meet in homes throughout the community here in Noonan. And the focus of these groups is, is simply Bible studies, sitting in the circle, opening up the scriptures, and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us as we study God's Word. So those are the three pillars. And we believe when you do those three things that there's a transformation that takes place in your life. And that will transform your own family and transform our community and thus making a difference for the sake of Jesus. Again, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you Sunday. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this station, its management, or its clientele. Kingdom Connected Ministries International with my husband, Elder Kenneth Harris. And we are in ministry together, serving together, loving every bit of it, and thanking God for the opportunity. And we also thank God for the opportunity this morning to come to you live from the studio. And I have my good friend here, Pastor Lavonia love it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let her introduce herself, and uh, then we'll get started. Okay. Well, I am Lavonia love it, and I am the uh, senior pastor at Agape Christian Center Ministries here in Luna, Georgia. And I am just so happy to be here with Apostle Harris. I love yes. coming to do the last hour broadcast. Thank and you. I pray that you all will receive. You have ears to hear what the Spirit is going to say to the church today. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. And um, 
Pastor, I'm always honored and thankful that I can call you and ask you to come mm -hmm. and we just sit and talk as two women in the ministry, the ministry. because that's not sadly still even in this hour is not well accepted right but what do we do keep preaching keep, keep, preaching. <laughs> keep preaching keep, preaching, keep, keep pastoring mm -hmm. and keep helping the people and so today as i may mention to you we want to talk about preparing the people for this last hour mm -hmm. because it is so needed Yes, it is. is so needed. Mm -hmm. And I look around, Pastor, and I'm finding that there are so many people that are in need mm -hmm. of Jesus. And he's right there knocking at the doors knocking of their heart. The door. That's right. Yes, but is. what are they doing? They are ignoring him. Mm -hmm. They are rejecting him. And they are, re they are ignoring the people that are sharing Jesus with them. with them. So what he, our uh, assignment is, uh, because we have been chosen for this hour, mm -hmm. because we're still living, right? we're, we're still, still breathing, we're still, we're still here. here. Mm -hmm. What our assignment is as pastor leaders is to teach the people. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to read just a few verses here coming out of Titus, the second chapter. Titus, the second chapter, uh, verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, yes. looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God mm -hmm. and our Savior, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. my God, Pastor, we, oh my God, and, and, and I don't know if this is the case with you, but I have seen this, the more I study, the more I read, the more I understand, I don't know nothing. Right, right. You, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? I understand. And I understand. I'm just thinking, God, and I thank God for every bit of knowledge that he teaches me, the Holy Spirit teaches me, or the Holy Spirit confirms when I learn from another, another godly person. Right, right. I thank God for it. Okay. And, and, and I'm just like, okay, God. Because that's what has to happen. We have to learn, and then we're better able to prepare the people, right? Right, that's true. But even in all of that, it's our job to prepare the people to do what uh, in in this 12th chapter? To deny ungodliness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and worldly lust. Right, because there's right. plenty of it, isn't there's it? plenty of it. There's a lot of it. And we mm -hmm. end to live soberly, mm -hmm. righteously, and godly in this world that we're living in right now. That's true. And I, you know, in... When you gave me the scripture, yes, and I start to meditate on the scripture, I understand that this scripture actually explains um, the grace of God as yes. something that is encouraging the believers today to to be in right behavior and yes. to, to live in right thinking. Because a lot of times we're not thinking right, True. and when you don't think right, you don't behave right. Come on, and if come we are on. going to prepare. The people for the uh, last hour, we have to extend this grace, yes. God's grace. Yes. We have to extend the grace, His kindness, and His love to mm. the people. And once we do that, I believe that I know that grace for me, grace has revealed um, a salvation to me. Yes. And then yes. I look yes. at grace. Grace has a name. Yes. And grace name is Jesus Christ. Yes. That's yes. what grace name is. And so in this last hour, Come on. our job is to bring more people to Jesus. Yes. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yes. Right? Yes. We're bringing yes. more people to Jesus. Yes. And a lot of times you cannot do that when you're just going along with their plan, you know, Come going on. along with their purpose. You have to, just like the scripture said, 
Uh, we have to continue it to wait for the fulfillment of our hope in the dawn and splendor of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. My the God. One. So, what do, what is it that we are supposed to be doing? We are supposed to be going out there, grabbing the people and bringing them and introducing them to Jesus yes. in this last hour because yes. he said that he don't want any to perish. Yes. He yes. don't want nobody to perish. But until we reach all of the different uh, people that are not saved, I'm yes. not talking yes. about the yes. ones. Yes. I'm gonna talk, we'll talk about the saved ones in a few yes. minutes. But right now we got to talk about the ones that are not saved, the ones that have not receive Jesus yes, as their Lord and yes, Savior. Yes, That's yes. the main thing that we have to do in preparing people for the last hour. It's not about our church. It's not oh, about oh, our uh, dressing, what we got oh, on and what we driving and none of that. But it is all about getting the people to Jesus, the author and the finisher of that book. My God. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it. what it's all about. That's it. That's and what I'm it's glad. all about. And, and it's always you always make some very good points. But I want to go back to what you said, loving the people. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is what God has been dealing with me and showing me. God has been saying to me, which I did a teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And in that teaching, the, what I, what, what I, uh, I, I knew it, but, but came back to me in a fresh way. The, the fruit of love is oh, the yeah. first one in the um, list. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and it was, it, I believe that it was purposeful in, in the way it was listed. Right, right. The way the Holy Spirit listed it. Because God has shown me to tell the people, if you cannot allow the love, mm. the fruit of love to be cultivated, yes, yes. the others mm -hmm. are not going to be cultivated properly. That's right. That's true. So you said we've got to love the people. we got to love the people. Now, and we've got to love them mm -hmm. in spite of, in spite of their yes. shortcomings, mm -hmm. their negligence, their lack of. And their mess. We've right. got to love them. You still have to love them. And so, if I allow the fruit of love, which God is love, mm -hmm. to be cultivated yeah. in me, right. everything else is going to fall in place. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I won't have to worry about being kind, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about being gentle. Right. I don't have to worry about being temperate. Mm -hmm. All of those things are going to fall in place. Because I have cultivated the love, the love, the love. of God mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something you have to cultivate. You have to work on it. You have to. And, and, and why am I even mentioning love? I mention it because we're talking about preparing okay, the people. people. Mm -hmm. You know as well as I know. When we start talking about preparing. And then what did uh, it say in Titus 12? Teaching them. Teaching them. Mm -hmm. People balk the teaching. They balk the teaching now. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't want to be taught. Right. They don't right. want to be led. That's when you find out if they have a goat mentality. Right. When they mm -hmm. buck it they because it. she mm -hmm. wants to be led. She wants to be cared for. So in teaching them, we have to make sure that we are exercising the love of, the God. Love of God. Because I don't know about you, but there are some people you teach, you teach, you preach, you preach, and you're not seeing the change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and, it, and really, it should bother us as pastor teachers mm -hmm. that they're not getting it. But what should we do anyway? Love them yeah, love all them. the way through. Love them through the preparation of bringing them to the knowledge of Christ. Because one day we shall see His glory yeah, see it. appearing. Mm -hmm. We gonna see it. And you know, um, 
when we talk about love and yes. the people uh, that's in the, I say the churches, which mean the body of Christ. Yes, yes. Uh, it brings me back to uh, Revelation. Yes, Revelation uh -huh. uh, when. Uh, John prophesied to the church at Ephesus. Come on. And he told them that, God told them that, you know, y'all left your first love. You know, this is one thing that I have yes. to give you. Yes, yes, yes. Is that yes. you left your first love, which they left the love of, love of God out of the church. Yes. The love of God was no longer in the church. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to exercise is the love of God. And and I when you I can relate to you saying that the more we teach, the more we teach, it seems like the people act well, I say that they act like they're not getting it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because they have a different agenda. Their motives are different. They want to operate in a different manner. You know, even though we are teaching and that's what the Lord told me. He said, Just keep teaching my word, just keep teaching my word. Yes, yes, he said, yes. You teach my word, you planting the seeds and yes. they, they hear you. They hear you, yes. but then they have motives. Sometimes people will have motives behind the teaching that you're teaching them. Yes. And they want to go their way. They want to do their thing. And I think that even in the, even as we are preparing the people for these last hours, we have to remember that deception, Come deception is so prevalent yes. in the world today. Yes. I mean, right today, even now to this yes. hour. Yes. Deception is really, really going on. And that is one of the tools that I believe that the enemy oh, is yes. using in yes. the last hour. It's deception. That's Come why the on. people cannot walk in love. They cannot yes. uh, walk in the love of God. But God said that, that the scriptures say that we got to get rid of all this ungodliness. Yes. You know, uncleanness. You got to get rid of all of this. Yes. Because Jesus said that he's coming back. But he's coming back with a church that has... No spots and no wrinkles. You know, he's coming back for his that's bride. It. So if he's coming back for his bride, he's not coming back for a bride that's ungodly. No, absolutely. No, he's not absolutely. coming back for a bride that's not godly. Come on. He's looking for his bride to be godly. Come and on. I think that we have got to just teach. We got to keep teaching. Holiness. Keep teaching. Come on. That's it. You got to keep teaching holiness regardless. We have to... Uh, once the people get a hold to what God actually is doing instead of looking at God bless me with the house, come God on, bless me come with on, a car, come on. God bless me with this man or this woman or this that. No, no, no. You got to look at the character of God and who he really is. And then you got to find out who you are in him. Come on. And I believe that once we... Have the people to know who they are in Christ. Come then on. we can prepare them even more for the last hour. But right now, we have, oh Lord, I hate to get to this part. But we have even some false prophets out here Come that on. we are dealing with with this disease. Yes, yes, yes. That is yes. deceiving people right yes. here. Yes, Come on. The, see, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at how many uh, revivals can you have if nobody is being revived? How many conferences can you have if nobody is giving their life to Christ? I mean, it's okay that the people are showing up, but what are they showing up for? Come what on. is happening when they show up? Come is on. Jesus in the picture? Come on. You know, that's what I'm looking for. Is Jesus in that picture that of, of the things that we do? So we got to get back to the basic. The basic is evangelizing. Yes, evangelizing, bringing the people to Jesus, and and not uh, what what are you not recycling the same people? Right, right, right. And, and that's what's happening when we put on uh, conferences mm -hmm. and when we put on the. Uh, two night, three night, five night revival. revival. We mm -hmm. are recycling the same people. Same people. Same people. Same people. And that's not what we are supposed to be doing. But you know, Pastor, we've been studying the book of Revelations. So uh, you talked about the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And every church had its problems. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia probably was the most honorable church to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It was. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the church of Laodicea. No, no. That is what we're dealing with in this hour. Mm -hmm. We are seeing a lot of Laodicean activity. It's a, it's a spirit of Laodicea in the atmosphere, in the atmosphere. today yes, yes. because mm -hmm. uh, the, church of, the church of Laodicea, they had everything and they needed nothing. Mm -hmm. But yet they had nothing and they needed everything. And they needed everything. Mm -hmm. that, that was the church of Laodicea. And we find ourselves uh, looking around and about us. And there are a lot of Laodicean mindsets. They don't want holiness. They don't want all of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be fully in the kingdom but they prefer to be in the world. Yes. So, you can't have both. Mm -mm. You, you can't have both. So, that's why it's our job. Those of us that are well prepared, those of us that are well equipped to teach the people holiness, teach them to deny ungodliness right. and worldly lust, that are all around us. Mm -hmm. Isn't that where we are? That's where we in are. In this hour. That's where we are. And 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 you said motives and agendas. Mm -hmm. That is so prevalent within the body of Christ. Motives and agendas. Uh, why can't we just be godly men and women seeking after God mm -hmm. with no motives, no, no agendas? agendas. Mm -hmm. Whereas we can be the example. Because that's always my prayer. It's God help me to be the best example for the people that I serve. Help me to be the best example. The best example. So they can mimic my behavior. And they can know that because I love you more, mm -hmm. that I will not do anything less than what you have required what me. What you required me. Because that's the only way we're going to teach. Can you imagine, pastor, let's just say I was your pastor. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you're a female, I'm a female. I'm your pastor. I'm married, but I have an affair on the side. How much can you learn from me? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't go to the... How to go out on your hook when I, that, I, I, I mm -hmm. look because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. That spirit will be prevalent in my life, mm -hmm. and before you know it, if you stayed under me, I'll be looking in the same direction. In the same direction, and that 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 is the truth. Uh, I know it is. That is the truth. Uh, you know, I was reading. I think it was first. Yeah, First Timothy chapter two. Yes. And verse 14, get back to uh, the deception. Come on. And it, it said, and Adam was not deceived. Come on. Now, Paul is talking to Timothy. Yes, he yes, kept, yes. And he said, now, Adam was not deceived, but That's the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Yes. See, Eve already knew the truth. She yes. knew the truth. She knew that God had commanded oh, her not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. She knew that. She knew but it. But she went ahead and she did it anyway. Anyway. That was because it looked good. Yes. She thought that God was holding something back from her. Yes. And yes. so she presented it to her husband, Adam, so he was not deceived. He just fell into sin. Yes. yes. By following behind yes. her. Yes. Yes. But that is something that we got to teach the people today is that, you know, you got to get rid of the sin. God hates sin. He yes, loves the yes, sinner. Yes. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin. Yes. And when we can, when you can come away from as best as you can the sin that's in your life, you can get even more closer to God. You know, because God, you, you can't come to God and you sin it. Oh, no. You know, no, some no, people, no, 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 no. And, and you know, I tell, I use First John chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Every Sunday, 
Yes. And I use that scripture because that is to believers who have fallen yes. into sin. Come you on. Know, yes. It's not for the our unbelievers, but yes. for the believers. Yes, and, I, and he's just letting you know that there is forgiveness. Yes. But you got to come and you got to confess. But the main thing is not the confession. The main thing is the forgiveness. Yes. yes. And see, that's what we don't want to do in the body of Christ today. We don't want to forgive each other. We don't want to help our brothers and our sister maybe fall. We got to pick them up. Yes. We yes. got to pick yes. them up and try to help dust them off, bring them to your pastor. And, and, and I just don't know. I just I know. don't know. I know. But wait a minute. Galatians. I think it's Galatians okay. chapter six. I just yes. want to look at it. I think that's that's good. Galatians chapter six. Come on. And I might I hope I'm not getting off of what we're talking about but uh, it's gonna be Galatians true. chapter six. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation, y'all. Right. Verse number one says, My beloved friends. If you see a believer who is overtaken with a fault, Come on. the one who is in the spirit should seek to restore him yes. in the spirit yes. of what? Of gentleness. Yes. But keep watch over yes. your own heart so that you won't be tempted to exalt yourself over him. My God. What is happening? We are not going to, to the believer that has uh, fallen and bringing them in with love. Yes. Going back with love. Yes. And a lot of them don't want you even, they, they don't want you to try to minister to them because they know that if uh, I tell you what I'm going through, tell you what I've done, then you're going to tell this person, you're going to tell that yes. person. Yes. Yes. And, yes. That, that, and, and a lot of um, um, ministry leaders do that. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. They'll tell people business, and that causes people not to want to come to Jesus. That's it. But we have to distinguish the character of, of God yes. from the character of man. Yes. It's totally different. It is. And I will throw in transparency mm -hmm. because God put that word in my spirit. Because really what you're saying is, is that we've got to be more transparent right. in the body of Christ. Because what is the ultimate goal? Help God. I need help. I need God. help. I need, I need, need help. help. I need God. You. So, mm -hmm. do you really want the help? Sometimes that requires transparency. And I'm going to be honest with you. I have the mindset that if I'm drowning, and I'm talking about really physically drowning, drowning. Mm -hmm. you think I'm just going to sit there and look at you and say, like, don't you see me drowning? Most victims that are drowning, they yes. are throwing their, hand throwing up their for hands help. up for help. That's right. And they're saying, help mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ. People come to church every Sunday, mm -hmm. drowning, but no help. But no help. And listen, now, the gifts of God. And really going to have to pick up in this last hour mm -hmm. because people are denying the help. God is going to use men and women to operate in the gifts. Right. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, mm -hmm. discerning of spirits, mm -hmm. uh, faith, um, uh, tongues, interpretation. God is going to use men and women. Now these tongues I'm talking about is an utterance. Mm -hmm. from God from himself God. Mm -hmm. for the body. Right. God is going to have to use people in this last hour because we're drowning. Right. But we're not asking for any help. We need help, God. We need your help. God send the help. And <clears throat> if we're not going to be transparent, then how are we going to know that you're drowning? Other than we exercise the gifts. Because God, one thing about pastors, we are, as God told Ezekiel, we are watchmen on the wall, aren't we? Yes, that's what we are. Mm -hmm. So God will make us to see what is going on. Now, you may not know exactly what's going on in my life if you were my pastor, mm -hmm. but you know something ain't right. 
Exactly. God will make you to know that something is not right mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Well, the first sign is you were avid. You were avid in your church attendance. But all of a sudden, I'm falling out. I come this Sunday. I don't come next Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. come back next Sunday. But I'm skip two Sundays and that. What is that other than hell? Yeah. Because there is no excuse for you not being in regular attendance in the house of God. Mm -hmm. Other than you're drowning. You're drowning. Mm -hmm. and you, you know, now, if you don't no longer want to be at the church that you are in, what do we need to do? Leave. Let your pastor know, I, I, I think my season is up here. Now, you know, we ain't going to believe that either, but, <laughs> okay, but at least do that. But at least do that much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just go. Don't leave. Don't be in limbo. Uh, I should say, well, I don't think I ain't going to say, that's craziness. And yeah. don't, don't make yourself crazy like that. Just go. But in this hour, I'm going to say this, and you come on in, Pastor. Nobody needs to be ripping and running from church to church. Oh no. Get somewhere and stay. And be prepared. Yeah, you gotta be prepared. You can't be running, uh taking your problem somewhere else. That's yeah, because it it, it, it's the same thing, you know, you I, I guess we need to get back to accountability. Who are you accountable to? That's it. You know, man. and That's if you it. are uh, at one church, in these, in these last hours, we got to be steadfast and unmovable. We can't be ripping and running all over the place. Come on, come on. You got to know everybody not teaching truth. <laughs> I'm going to help you. Thank you. Everybody is not teaching truth. Everybody, some people just, I mean, I can look at people sometimes and, you know, people be preaching and nothing is wrong with that. That's yeah, part of yeah. That's part of it, the preaching stuff. Yeah. But I look at sometimes when all of this is going on, people emotions get are away. being moved. You know, yes, they're being yes, moved by yes. emotions and everything. And then once the emotion comes down, you still need help. As you said, you still got your hands up. You need help. Come because on you were just That's emotionally moved. But the Bible tells us that we shall know the truth, and the truth is what will make us free. Yes. Not, 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 not a man, not a woman, not a boy, not a girl. Yes. He said the truth will make us free. That's and it. I, I just want to read once again this right here. I read Come on. this too. Uh, in Second Corinthians chapter okay. eleven. All right. Second and and you know, I, I just get so amazed at the word of God sometimes. Amen. And it, it, in chapter eleven, Paul was talking about the virgin bride of Christ. Then he talked about the super apostles, and that's what I wanted to get to the super oh, teachers, apostles. Right? Yes, the super apostles is nothing but false teachers. Yes. And they wanted that that that. To wonder why Paul wasn't taking the money. Yeah. You know, Jesus didn't take money when he was going around doing what he did. Yes. He didn't take money. But, you know, and I know that it takes money to yes. operate a ministry. Oh, yes, it does. It takes money to operate yes. a ministry. Yes. But Paul said in verse number 11, he said, Why? Is it because I have no love for you? Do I not love you, the reason I'm doing this? Yes. You know, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I love you. Yes. I am proclaiming the word of God to you because I love you. He said, God knows how much I love you. But in order to eliminate the opportunity for those super apostles to boast that their ministry is on the same level as mm -hmm. ours, I will continue to practice. 
He said, I'm going to continue to practice. He said, for they are not true apostles, but deceitful ministers who masquerade as special apostles of the anointed one. My masquerade, God. that word masquerade, I was like, oh, Lord, Jesus, help us. Come because there's so many yes. that is masquerading right now. Yes, yes. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just not funny it's, how they are masquerading, and everybody is, it's, it's, it's real, it's real, I feel you. And you don't want to, you don't want people to be deceived. No. no. I mean, I'm not talking if you're apostle, that's fine, and, and, and there are true apostles out yes, here now. Yes, There's yes, true yes. apostles out here, but I'm saying that, that and when I, I think when Paul is talking about apostles, he, he can be talking about the pastors in the church, the, yes. uh, the evangelists, the teachers, and all of that. Yes. What we are not supposed to do is supposed to be more than somebody else. Yes. We have to just be who we are. And and if you're running, as you said, from church to church to church, you're not getting any sound doctrine. You get some doctrine over here. You get what that person say they believe, what this person say they believe, because you wouldn't be running if you know the Word of God and if you under somebody that's teaching straight from the Bible. Amen. You know, Amen. and sometimes... They don't want to hear it straight from the Bible. They want to hear the man-made version of it. Yes, yes. The man-made version. So that way, I can do whatever it is that I want to do. Yes. But getting back to Titus chapter 2, we got to get away from all of this ungodliness. We ungodliness. Do. We got to come back. We got to bring it on back from all of this ungodliness to holiness. Yes. And holiness, please don't even mistake that holiness does not mean that you wear your dress down on the floor or you don't have on no makeup, you don't show your, your have it stuff up to your neck. That is not holiness. Holiness is a relationship that you have with God. And that's what this is all about, is us bringing more and more people to Christ, bringing them to Him, bring, bringing people to Christ. And I believe that if we were to get back to evangelism, the way that we used to be when we first started it'll out, make a difference. it'll be a big difference. And people will flock to God. Yes. And just give people the word. Give people the word. Don't give them your opinion. Because he said, in the, I think it's in the book of Revelation where he said, you don't need to add to this. Yeah. And you yeah. don't need to take yeah. from this. Yeah. So that means that I got to preach this, that, and only. Only. Only this right here. I got to preach. And that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, uh, y'all stop listening to these uh, special, as they call themselves, special apostles. Yes. They're yes. special. Amen. This one is more than, uh, this apostle is better than this apostle. No. Okay. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, none of us are anything without Jesus. No. No. We are nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and I would say that's a spirit of pride mm -hmm. that has crept in for us to even look at ourselves mm -hmm. as being better than the next. Than the next person. But let me, let me add something. You brought back to mind what my uh, sermon, my former pastor, Reverend W.J. Buchanan, who is deceased now, mm -hmm. an awesome man of God, he preached a sermon called local weed. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I can't say that that was the actual title, but that's what he talked about. And what he was saying was, when livestock graze in the wrong pasture, or if they get out of the pasture mm -hmm. where they're supposed to be, and they go graze somewhere else, mm -hmm. they're going to run into some local weed. That's right. Local weed That's good. is called crazy weed. Mm. It'll make you crazy. Wow. And let me tell you wow. why. Mm -hmm. Because you're eating in too many places. Too many places. Once a, just think about a cow or a sheep mm -hmm. that gets away from its original place, it grazes. It grazes everywhere. Because they have to eat, and they are going to eat. Right. So while they're grazing in places where they should be, 
they have gotten a hold to some local weed. To some local weed. That's mm. going to make them crazy and it's going to cause them to be unstable. So, with people going here, there, and yonder, you're not getting what God had ordained for you because, believe it or not, God is supposed to send you to the pastor. That's right. Where That's you right. should graze. Where you should graze. That's but, right. but, but here's the truth, and I'm going to let you close this out. We don't let God send us. We go with agendas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go with hidden motives. motives. We go looking for men, looking for women, mm -hmm. looking for, uh, you know, there was one particular person that uh, wanted to be heard. He had something going on with some poetry, and he wanted to do his poetry. Well, you living like a sinner. What kind of poetry can you do in the house of God? <laughs> Come on now. That's right. What, what and, 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 and it wouldn't go happen here. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. So you won't go where you can get, where that, you done. Can get that done. That's right. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So listen, men and mm -hmm. women of God, get where God sent you. Uh, get with God. Sit up under the teaching. Get prepared. That's right. Get prepared. Come yes. on, Pastor. And as we started out with Titus, talking yes. about Titus it chapter went two, but and it's good. yeah, we went in, we went all over the place. But it's Titus good. still explains the yes. grace of God. Yeah, and and that's where we want to be. It's in the grace of God, and and grace, as I said earlier, grace has a name, and that's Jesus Christ. Yes. He is here, and he is uh, beckoning for us to come. Yes. And I will still say, Jesus is right at the brink. We at the last hour. Oh, Jesus is right there. He's right there. He's ready to come and get his bride. Yes. He is ready. But yes. he wants us to be ready when he come and get us. We, you don't want to be left, do you? You don't want to be left. So you want to uh, get prepared right now. When we say the last hour, we're talking about when Jesus comes. Because none of us know the day. We don't know the minute. We don't know the hour that the Son of Man shall appear. But one thing that we can do, we can look at what's around us, what's happening. Yes, I yes, hear around yes, us. Yes. And if you know anything about the Bible, you know that the Bible is fulfilling. And the Bible is telling us. What is going on around us yes, right now? Yes, yes. Let us know that we are living in the last hours. You yes. know, you used to say the last days. The days have come down to the hours. Now yes. we are living yes. in the last hours. Yes. So yes. I just admonish you all. I encourage you to get ready, to get ready, to get ready, and then stay ready. So, because if you get ready and stay ready, you won't have to get ready when you come. You know, because that's going to be too late. Yeah, that's going to yes, be too late. Yes, yes. We need to do it now. Receive grace today. And grace is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 My mm -hmm. God, my God. And Pastor, I'm going to close it out with this because it just came to me. God shared with me one time before. We were talking about get, getting in one place and staying so you can be prepared. Mm -hmm. God said to me, what plan? has ever survived if you keep pulling it up where you planted it the right. first time. The first time. Mm -hmm. So really, all that was was a picture of us as men and women of God. Yes. We can't keep being pulled up and going somewhere else. Every time you pull up a plant and move it, if you do it too regularly, leave. You want to eventually kill that plant. Mm -hmm. The plant gonna die. I know. It'll, it'll die. I know. And I know you know because you are a plant person. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She's I, a plant person. Y'all heard her. <laughs> I am, and I love it. I love it. But Pastor, again, thank you for taking time out to come and be with us today. It's always so refreshing and such a blessing. So listen. Men and women of God, 
Stay where you've been planted. Yes. Grow where you've been planted. Mm -hmm. Get trained where Where you've been been planted so you will be prepared for warfare in this last hour. Amen. Amen.